Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're over on the YouTube account. We have 17,000 diamonds, so we could definitely do some summons, but we're gonna continue with the Ghoulish Gallery. And overall, we are gonna look at a very consolidated, cleaned up guide version for this specific game mode. Now, overall guys, you can see we have a lot of attempts left. We're continuing building heroes one by one at a time and following general guides. We had that Chinese guide that came up. Um, translation was kind of rough, so a Ragna actually went and cleaned it up a little, which I'm gonna show you. So let's hop over and we'll take a look at it. All right guys, so here is the consolidated cleaned up P PDF from Ragnar. Um, big shout out to him. He actually sent it over to my Gmail. So I got a ability to see this. And again, this is really smooth, really cleaned up. Um, all of the translations have been done correctly as far as I know from the Chinese version. But looking at this, it is absolutely stunning guys. So let's go ahead and run through this. Now looking again right here at the Zolrath or the Temporal Deceit, we are looking to get level one. Now you have to be very careful with the totems. If you caught the video from last night, I actually used a level up totem because we were building it for the Awakened version of Athelia. Um, we got kind of done wrong because it dropped a red skill level up. Now we did not use the secondary totem, which gives us the ability to actually have two level up slots. A lot of players were wondering why we couldn't have that. It is because there is a specific totem that gives you the top and the bottom artifact. You get three attack, three defense, one bonus one, which is kind of the open one, but there is a totem that gives you a second one. But looking in here, you can see optimal collection abilities. And I don't know if these are in a specific order because again, kind of looking utility wise, at the collection abilities, I would absolutely go in there and probably build out Jerome first, just utility wise, probably followed right by Tamaris, and then going in for Zolrath and probably Frampton. Um, you can build these out in a couple different manners, but you'll notice when it comes to the defensive lineups and a majority of these guys, they are the exact same. That is right, a majority of the defensive um, the defensive pieces are the same. There's a slight variation, but it seems like the damage reduction is really what you're looking for as the primary in here. And then of course, looking at here, insight, and then the full attack. Now we're looking full attack, of course, to buff. So a lot of the heroes within AFK Arena um, skills are amplified by the attack, which is again, why Zolrath, why Jerome, we do have stacking attack on there. The attack is actually used differently than just as a damage dealer within a bunch of different places. And then you can see guys, we have the physical pierce right down there, the crit damage amplification. Now with the crit damage, uh, or I believe the crit, there is a specific totem for this as well, guys. So to be able to get, and I believe it is just the crit rune, but to be able to get the crit, I believe there is a specific um, totem. And again, there is a massive, massive RNG factor when it comes to really building this out. I wonder if I can just zoom in a little bit more and still keep this, um, keep this pretty clean here to make it a little bit bigger. But looking at the clashing wave, so actually looking at our second warrior relic, which this one or the collection, the second collection is very, very much damage. It, it is the damage orientated. So essentially, if you have a warrior class that is more of the support, um, definitely going with that Temporal Deceit, looking at the straight damage dealer of the Clashing Waves, we have all of our damage dealers in here, guys. And again, attack, attack, um, erosion. So a lot of players were talking about erosion and what is erosion actually for? Um, there are only a very few, very, very specific heroes that use erosion. Um, so it's one of them clarification questions. It actually has the ability when you get a, a, and I believe my understanding is when there is like a debuff, it can amplify the debuff that is on there, which again, Brutus is going for erosion, full attack on there, and then insight for the crowd control aspect. Brutus, of course, is a massive crowd control hero. Even though he does quite a bit of damage, Crowd control is really key on there as well as that debuffer, but you can see attacks, full attacks. So not only are they making themselves stronger with attack, dropping the full attack is going to build up and make the entire team stronger. Now looking specifically at these two guys, attack, physical pierce, crit damage amplification, and then attack, crit, crit damage amplification. So you can see a little bit of a variation in there. Overall with Rem getting the physical pierce with the awakened version of Athelia, picking up that crit, again, that comes from one specific totem. Defensive remains almost the exact same, guys. Some HP in here again for the damage dealer, full HP right there, full defense again, because these almost are more of a support class hero. Looking at our tanking artifacts, again, clean this up a ton, guys. 
Even here, we don't need any levels up, so you don't want to level up this specific artifact. Not really a big need to, but looking here, Insight, and then it has um, PRF and then Full Attack. So these are the crowd control aspects that we see. These are the support tanks that we see within a lot of different game modes. And then looking here, guys, damage resistance again with that tenacity um, and then the full defense. Now, the damage dealing tanks, a little bit of a different build here with the soul suction. You can see the awakened version of Shmira. Similar to Brutus is that erosion ability. The way that the hero is built, the utilization of the erosion is very, very strong. Attack, full attack, which is just literally across the board for these heroes. Defensive kind of remains the exact same for this one. And of course, this artifact is going to level one. Now, there is a level three. Now, let me express this, guys. A lot of players said there is no level two or level three, essentially. This does require a combination of a multitude of totems to get to the level two. So not only do you have to add in one totem, and I'm, I'm drawing blank on the name off chance, but there is one, again, that adds that essentially that seventh and eighth one up there. But when you get the eighth part, which I'll show you, hopefully I can, I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but you have to have a level up totem. You have to get lucky to get another one, or if you're running two level up totems, which again, we'll look at in just a minute, along with the other ability will give you the chance to get this guys, which is kind of crazy to get this plus two. And the damage increase is increased by 8% up to five stacks. This is a massive, massive damage. Normal attack damage, guys, goes through the roof with this. Now, as you can see, we have all of our famous, famous um, and happy damage dealers right here. Attack, physical pierce on almost all of them. Crit damage amplification. Some insight in there as well, just because of the crowd control aspect that the Awakened version of Baden does possess. And then, of course, some other heroes. We have crit down there. We have erosion down there. And it is all about damage and physical pierce. And then, of course, when it comes to the resistance or the defensive totems, all running the damage reduction. It seems like across the board, damage reduction is what everyone is running. And it makes sense. Now, looking down here, interesting enough, guys, the Boiling Berserker, you can see we do have Baden in both places, depending on how you're running them. And this is really dependent on the game mode that is being run in. This one, of course, does not need the level, so you can save your totems for other ones. But you can see Attack, Physical Pierce, Insight for all three of these. Titus, I probably wouldn't even build at this point. Even Raku, kind of questionable for formations. But Damage Resistance, Tenacity, and then probably HP, Full HP, Full Defense, any of those to go in to that last slot within the hero. Now, looking at the Beguile Whisper, so we're getting into the Caster or the Mage Relics. Beguile Whispers, we want the plus one on there, running right here with Matria and running with Leonardo. And then, of course, down here, Insight, Attack, and the PRF that you're running within here. Then the Dark Portal is for the Damage Dealers, and you'll see, similar to the other one, guys, the plus two in here is huge. When the, the target's energy is erased, the energy shortfall is converted into the Holder's Energy Recovery for at least 30 points. So... 30 points of energy is the minimum that they're taking, guys. So if the target has zero energy, it is going to take at least 30 points. But chances are in a lot of these formations, you're going to be taking a lot more than the 30 points of energy. And then, of course, guys, attack, magical pierce, crit damage, amplification to build out Belinda just as a damage dealing machine. Same that we see right down here with um, Scarlet. And then, of course, attack, full attack, and erosion right there. Um, erosion is in red. I'm not sure exactly why. I don't know if there's a, a preference or, or a requirement down below. But you can also see that we have Amelia in there as well, again, as a buffer, as a crowd control. Insight is going to make a big difference, guys. When you're running a lot of these heroes, especially in the Treasure Scramble versus other heroes that are going to essentially have these relics too, going to be interesting to see exactly how this comes out. Then our final one, you can see these, oh, right there. Red marked abilities offer op, uh, additional options. There you go. Additional abilities can be duplicated. So here, just like I did with my copy of the Awakened version of Athelia, um, I ran double attack because that is what we had. Now looking at the support for the final one, strategic supplies, you can see a plus two, guys. And a mysterious potion is added to the stall. 
for use of the allied heroes dealt the highest damage to increase 30% of the attack rating. Massive, massive attack rating boost right there. And then of course, looking down here, guys, these are all of our support heroes that we know and love pretty much in every single game mode. You can see a lot of insight in there, some erosion, full attack to continue buffing the attack of the damage dealers much, much higher. These remain just about the same. You can see a little bit of heal in there with the Awakened version of Solus. And then of course, Dream Hopper is the support. Now, interesting enough, guys, we do have um, Liberta in here, again, going full damage in there. Um, we do have the original version of Aziz. We have um, Halos and Merlin as well. Again, their abilities are triggered by attack. Getting that higher attack, getting that full attack is going to make a big, big difference because of how the heroes fundamentally work and work very well. Now the list is incomplete. There will be relevant heroes that are added. And again, guys, big shout out for cleaning this up. I know the Chinese versions a lot of times with how we're building it and how it looks. So I am actually gonna drop this over on my Discord server. I am also gonna put a link down to it down below so you can hop in there and you can check it out. Wanna make sure we share the cleaned up information. And again, a big shout out to Ragnar for sharing this with me, cleaning this up and taking the time and effort to really get this done and make it look beautiful. So guys, that'll do it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.